So once again, Mark throws another curveball at me. My plate's already full, and he's having a hard time delegating exactly what I need to get done. First off, the 1971 Black Cuda. He wants to get it lifted up on the shop crane so we can get it hoisted around and start getting things disassembled. So we got the purple sunroof Challenger all painted, detailed, and setting aside for assembly. Uh, meanwhile, I got a phone call from the owner of the Phantasm Cuda, and he's really motivated to get that done. So we're gonna have to focus a lot of tension and really make up some ground fast on that one. The other thing is, he keeps mentioning to me about this new door, and that I need to come in and work on a graphic for it. We're getting a brand new fire door from Cookson here in just a couple of weeks. Uh, one of the things I really got excited about was when I talked to the salesman, he said, if you want, we can do some special graphics, knowing what we do for a living down here. So uh, immediately I started thinking, what would I want on that door? Our friends out at Wacom actually sent us this marvelous new piece of machinery, and I'm gonna take advantage of this thing. So for the last two years, Josh has been bothering me, bugging me, saying, we need one of these, we need one of these, it's, and it's a Wacom tablet. I don't know everything that it does. I know they're pretty cool. I also know they're kind of spendy. Um, so I put it off, you know, I put off wanting to buy one of these. It's gonna make the process of drawing up this graphic easy. I mean, you can draw on the screen. Everything is right there at your fingertips. So you don't have to constantly sit there and dibble dabble on the keyboard. I mean, it, it's got its own little stylus. I can zoom in, I can change my brush size. The screen, I can rotate it around just by twisting my finger. And I can even adjust the monitor. I can even lift it up all the way if I feel like standing. If I've been sitting too long, I can just lift it up and stand up and draw when it's flat like a table. So I thought, well, you know, this might be an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Uh, if I can get a good buy on the Wacom tablet and get Josh to do the artwork that I'd have to pay somebody pretty good to make it, uh, why not? All day, all day we got burned into it. Okay. Dude, I'm doing this for you, man. Josh was a nerd before, but I think, like, I think if they have a nerd, now they have like a super nerd. Because all he does is sit there in front of that stupid tablet, hour after hour after hour, drawing things. He hasn't shown me anything, but he seems to be enjoying it. Again, uh -huh. again, all day. You're wasting my time. I'm doing this for you. Okay. What so. is that? If you took all day to draw that. Moving on. Who said Let's, they wanted a Chevy yeah. Camaro? I can't kidding. be happy about that. You took all day to draw that, or is that just a rough picture? It's next. More and I didn't think I could hate the first picture anymore. Go ahead. Garbage, next. Waste of time, go. Dude. I'm telling you, I've been in here. I'm starting to get pissed off. I honestly wish that Mark was more like the Wacom. I mean, this thing is just so easy. And it's, it doesn't talk back to you. It doesn't talk crap to you. It just, it's not manipulative. It's just easy. It's easy to work with. Something that Mark definitely has a challenge with. I used to be pretty artistic, so maybe my mind will mix with his and we'll think of something cool. I mean, hopefully that'll make Mark happy, right? Hey, you're, you're no Rembrandt, okay? I just needed a simple picture. You didn't listen to anything I had to say about the content, the look I wanted, that's better. How long did you spend drawing that? I don't know. The other ones are a joke or what? Because they didn't even have the branding that I wanted in them. So do you like this one, yes or no? I can live with that one. So would this be something that you would like to go on that fire door? Yes. I like really? It. Yep. Overall, I think he did a really good job, especially in the finished product. I think he burned up a lot of daylight playing around with the other pictures that he knew damn good and well I wouldn't like. But the one he did do, he did a good job on it. At least now he's done with it, so he can go back to working on the black car like we need to have done in just a couple of weeks. I'm actually looking really forward to seeing the artwork on the door when Cookson comes down to install it. It's gonna be really cool. God, you're looking more like Count Chocula every day. Hey, I'm glad you like it, man. Finally, one thing we can agree on besides the fact you're a complete 
likes it though. <laughs> so I have everyone back to work on the Black Phantasm Cuda. There's a lot of detailing, a lot of cleanup, a lot of prep that needs to be done, but we're all on it now. Kind of in the zone, ready to start getting some stuff organized. I've got all the, the fastening supplies laid out, the nuts, the bolts, the screws, the swivels, etc. And I'm going through the book right now, jotting down notes on what the, the finishing colors are gonna be on all the fastening screws. And I just wanna get everything in preparation so that when these guys get back in here, they're not gonna be at each other's throats trying to get everything in line. It's all about operation organization. If you don't have your stuff laid out and you're not organized, things are gonna get hectic and there's gonna be a lot of chaos. And God forbid Mark comes out here and nothing got done. You know for a fact he's gonna rip my head off and kick it around the floor. After I signed off on the graphic, Josh got it sent in to uh, Cooks and Cornell. I understand that it's now installed on the door and they're sending interior tech down to have the door installed. We're installing a door for graveyard cars. The process is pretty much look at our material, make sure everything's good, make sure opening adequate, got everything we need. I came down a month ago to talk to Mark to field verify an opening with him. I went over some problems, some issues with side clearance. We've got an electrical meter on the right-hand side that's uh, restricting our clearances. On the left-hand side, we have an access uh, man door, and the framing's kind of sticking out of the opening. I talked to him about it, and he was going to get it all taken care of for us. We get here today, and nothing was done. Not a contractor. But yeah, I mean, I agreed to do it, but that doesn't mean I'm going to do it. Just makes us have to do more work, you know? Here's an idea, okay. Why are you making a building fit the door? Why not make the door fit the building? I mean, <laughs> I'm old school here, but. Just gorgeous, look at that. You guys just finished putting the door up and it's absolutely amazing. I mean, even if you forget about the fact that there's a beautiful mural of our beloved 71 Cuda on one side of it, just the fact that that is one trick door. What Cookson and Cornell have done is taken an operator, a release device, and made it almost as fully automatic as you can get. Once your alarm activates it, it sends a signal, Let's the door come down, it's dropped. So you don't have to go up and reset you the whole thing like You don't have to go up and put tension on. You don't have to go up and oh, re-engage nice the system. motor. Wow. It's all automatic. This is going to allow graveyard cars to continue not only doing a, a wonderful job that we always do and a quality job, but to show that its surroundings are quality as well. All right, well, I got to get off here because they just got done putting the door in, so I'm going to go check it out. OK. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I just got done checking out the door for the first time and it looks phenomenal. God, that looks great. My design turned out great and I gotta give credit to our friends out at Wacom because without them, I'd be in the back still doing on a piece of paper having Mark yelling at me. Cindy, let's do this thing. Never ends, never ends. I need the bell housing and everything ready to go on that engine in about 15 minutes. Wait, Watch buddy. your fingers, uh -huh. gentlemen. Ow! You don't raise it up, I'm gonna slug in. So today we're working on the 71 CUDA 340. We're gonna assemble the front suspension and K-member. Uh, earlier in the week, we disassembled it, uh, cleaned it, inventoried it, and began the detailing process, which is very important when you're doing an OE restoration. Uh, but that process is now done, and we're gonna start bolting it together.
I spent a lot of time showing how a part is prepared, after it's prepared and cleaned, if it gets blasted, satin cleared, if it gets nickel cadmium finished, uh, zinc chromate, or if it's a 80% gloss black instead of a full gloss black. Those are the kind of things that we spend a lot of time studying and researching so that we can have the bragging right that we are putting cars together OE. So you'll notice that the, uh, I did the paint, uh, duplicated the original Cosmoline. On the lower control arms, originally they took the control arms when they were brand new metal and they would dip them down into a vat of Cosmoline about halfway up this rivet point. Uh, but that goes about up to there and then they'd pull it out and they'd let it hang and dry. And the only problem is the nature of the Cosmoline is it's a little bit of a waxy product. So the cars that I've seen at the shows that have that duplicated, it's right and it's good and definitely OEM. But some of the, my cars end up being drivers and so if you're going to drive this car down the road, you don't want this to be kind of an oily, waxy product that's going to collect bugs and rock and debris from the road. So it's kind of the tar and feather gag if this was Cosmoline. So what I did was I created a paint out of my PPG paint system that duplicated the look of it. It even has kind of that blushed off look like the waxy Cosmoline would have. But the thing is, is it's perfectly dry. Nothing sticks to it. But it is OEM. Bugs and mosquito mosquitoes yes. are OEM. That would be. OK, let's put this thing together. Mark's in the zone. Darren and I are over there trying to put the steering box in and Mark just comes right over, shoves us out of the way and says, you guys are taking way too long. Why are you milking that that long? I want to hammer these down to 150 foot pounds. Nobody likes that anymore. You know what, dude? I don't want to strip it. God. Did you start it? Darren and I are trying to work together to get it done the right way and efficiently, but I mean, Mark's always in a hurry to get stuff done and that's how problems are going to start. Well, regardless, it doesn't matter. Okay, that doesn't work, fool. It doesn't work, Paul. In the case of an OE restoration, everything has to be OE. Not just the nut and the bolt and the washers and all the hardware that go on something, but the finish and the fit and the date codes, all of those things have to mimic whatever year that car was put together. That makes putting an OEM drivetrain together about 8,000 times harder than putting together some small block Chevy with a power glide behind. Is there a certain way that these face, or do they go that, I mean, isn't that? I always put them like that. It doesn't matter. If you actually so read the book, he, he even talked about it in here. Another thing that I kind of get used to seeing on certain OEM restorations is people won't pay attention to what direction the bolt went in at the assembly plant. Uh, in some cases, not very often, it doesn't matter. And it seems to me that the only time it doesn't matter whether it goes front to back or back to front is when, like in the case of a tie rod, when you flip it over, whatever you had it in before will be facing the opposite direction. Need to turn the steering wheel. I'm gonna move this. Watch your fingers, gentlemen. Ow! I'm gonna move this. Give me a little bit of time. Watch your fingers, gentlemen. I'm gonna move this. Watch your fingers, gentlemen. Ow! Give a little bit of time, Mark, maybe to move. So we just finished putting the last few pieces on our front suspension K-member, so it's completely done now, which is amazing. It, it, we got it put together in like an hour where normally we would have spent half a day doing it. So now that it is all done, all we've got to do is finish detail on the motor, transmission, and bell housing. We can set those on the cradle, and it will be ready at that point to have the car set down around the suspension. Josh and Doug are working on disassembling the rest of the pieces on the rear end, uh, the rear suspension, and getting it detailed and cleaned, and there's a lot of sandblasting. So my cousin called me a couple of weeks ago, Doug. Uh, we grew up together, and we basically grew up doing engine work, motorcycle work, mini bikes. Uh, I have a great deal of respect for his mechanical abilities, and he needed some work, so I said, heck yeah, get down here. But I want him to be able to get all the way up against this lip here, right to here. So this area here needs to be clean. Like, when I asked Josh to make sure it was clean, he, now remember the new rule is if I tell him to do something, I want him to completely ignore it and not do it. Then I don't come mad, mad at you, you know, like I've been yeah, getting in trouble because right. I come at yeah. you all mad because yeah. I'm expecting something out of you. I ain't expecting nothing anymore. Okay, good for you. I have lowered my expectations. Thank you. Meanwhile, Darren and I are gonna be in here working on the 340 so we can get it painted and installed on the new K-member. So I'm gonna leave you with those pieces. I'm gonna take Tweedledum here. Nice haircut, Alfalfa. <laughs> up here and work on the motor. Hi, cousin. Can I post with him? How did you cope growing up with him? Well, I didn't live with him. <laughs> yeah, I know if I, I would have, I probably would have been gone. Should we go hang this? Yes, we should. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm ready. I am just 
Oh. That non-hardening. Um, it will set up, but it doesn't get completely hard. A lot of times when Darren and I just working kind of one-on-one, -on -one, we get along pretty well. He's a knowledgeable guy. Uh, in the case of the 71 stuff, he had a 71 340 car when he was younger. He remembers a lot of little details on it. So in this case, when we're getting along, we can get a lot done. Yeah, I'd make it even with the edge. So if you needed to cut some down, go ahead and do it. Putting the intake manifold on the 340 is a little challenging because the owner specifically wanted an Edelbrock aftermarket intake manifold. He wanted the uh, Performer, I think it's called. So it's a dual plane aluminum intake manifold. My client with the Phantasm Cuda, he's got quite a few different Mopars. Most of them are very OE. Uh, he wasn't as hell bent on making sure that every little detail item was OEM. So he wanted to add the Edelbrock aluminum intake because he had one on a car when he was a kid. But I need the nipple for that. What did you call me earlier? I think it's like a 930 seconds. Because you know I'm fighting this stupid intake no. manifold and I got you picking at me just no, constantly. I'm to help you no, to do but it. I know I'm not gonna put this word on there what you call me anyway. What'd I call you? You called me an a**er. Um, and he walked out, he helped me back. But I called him a bad word and you know, sorry. Okay, so I need, oh, you got the bell housing, nice. Yeah. Um, and you're thread chasing the holes even. Yes. I love it. Are you happy? Does that make you proud? How did you know that was the right bell housing? Um, you're either a really good guesser or you know the answer. I actually did guess, believe it or not. You really did? Yes, the I did. The hole at the top is small block. If it didn't have there, then it would be a big block. Correct. I remember that now. Nice work. Uh, the next thing that I have on here, is the, the 340 transmission itself, which needs to be pressure washed, cleaned, and completely free of any dirt. Uh, the sway bar, which we finally got all the uh, the brackets and the uh, rubber grommets off of that. So I need to get that sandblasted. I have other miscellaneous transmission parts and pieces that I need to get cleaned up. And so I can get everything laid out for the transmission to be assembled super swamped with a million other things that Mark wants me to do. And somewhere in all this list of things, I have to add in whooping his ass and Darren's as well. What are you doing? I need the bell housing and everything ready to go on that engine in about 15 minutes. And it doesn't look like it's any different than when I walked away from it. So is that possible? You okay? No, in a matter of life or death, if, death if I don't get it done in 15 minutes? No, fired and uh, disowned from the family. Okay, that's more minutes. like it. I'd recommend going you know, in the family. You know, I think that right I should away. have signed the, uh, the prenuptials with you. You can't put the axles in without the seals being in. Orange means it's a sure grip. A great looking factory street hemi orange. Do you remember what you said this morning? You're going to start respecting Mark. I me. never said yes, that. Don't did. put words in my yes, mouth. You you said you this is why I go off the deep end. Us a little bit. No. Whenever you or well, him you pay for a... Pointing. Dude, what's wrong? Because you need to what's stop. What's wrong with you? You're getting in my head. You and listen, I, I, I hate you right now. In? Dude, don't. Oh, my God. Have you ever had your nose broke? I had a guy try it once. <laughs> try to break your nose? Yeah, you well, do or do not, there is no try, okay? Either you did get your nose broke or you did not. Okay. Why? Because you're cruising for it, man. Oh, okay. So do you know if the fuel pump goes on before it gets painted, before the engine gets painted? No. You really don't know? No, do you know? Yeah, I know. But you should know. It does go on. All the Mopars, except for the Hemi. The fuel pump goes on why first. Why you said I know? Well, that's why I, I asked you. I thought we were going to look it up in the book. That's why I asked you. I it, thought... was your, it was your chance to shine, but you can't. Well, I did know. Well, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. I ask you a question, you <laughs> don't answer it. You can't be mad at me. <laughs> so even in the case of our Phantasm Cuda, uh, when I have a client that wants to change some things up, maybe it was a drum brake car and he wants a disc on it, or in this case, he wants an aluminum intake manifold versus the original, I still make sure that we round up all the correct pieces and have them detailed and ready to install should that owner ever want to change it back to the OEM style. I'm not
not sure what it is, but it seems like all the stars are lining up just perfect right now. We are getting a lot done on the Black 71 Cuda. Uh, I don't know if it's just better spirits, uh, better equipment, better lighting, better whatever, but we're actually rocking and rolling on this thing. What do you got? What kind of sound you got? I got a BLT, bro. What'd you get? What says? I told you I wanted something Italian. I'm trying to start eating better, so I started eating sandwiches more often, and less of the fried burgers and and uh, the, the high saturated fat stuff. Don't put your mouth on that. Too late. Don't do it. <laughs> That's my sandwich. I told him exactly what I wanted. I wanted an Italian sub. I don't know what all's on it, but I know it's Italian, right? He came back with a chicken sandwich, which I had a bite of and it was good, but that's not the point. The point is, I was in the mood for Italian. I've been watching a lot of The Sopranos lately, and uh, they eat a lot of Italian type of foods. What's what are you talking it? about? That's a BLT, fool. Mother. Well, beast. So Mark sent me down to Quiznos to get us some sandwiches, and he asked for something Italian. He didn't specify exactly on Italian. I see chicken carbonara. Sounds kind of Italian, so I'll pick it up for him. I got myself a BLT because I love BLTs. He was not really satisfied with it. I guess he wasn't in a sure. chicken mood. So he decided to take my that. sandwich and eat it. Okay, bye. That is the best sandwich I've had in a long, long time. What, mine? The only problem I've got with it is you took mine. Now, now we're even. This whoa, is my whoa, sandwich. Whoa, whoa, dude, come on. This is my sandwich. The receipt's sandwich. in the bag. The receipt's in the bag. This Check it over. I'm just not a big chicken. I'm, I'm more Italian, so I like a lot of, a lot of, that's why I ordered, specifically ordered something Italian. His head's just stuck in the Sopranos world. Let me give you a piece of advice, okay? If Tony Soprano asks you for an Italian sandwich, don't give him a chicken delight. You know, it's Polly this, so-and-so's gonna get whacked. Because you're gonna be dead. They're gonna be picking you up off the bottom of the ocean. You're on a power trip, you know that? When you want something Italian, when you want to be able to pop somebody, this is what you want. And that's just it, it's not about the sandwich. He keeps making it about the sandwich. It's not about the sandwich. It's about following directions. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ice you if you make another mistake like this again and bring me a chicken sandwich when I go Great to boss. Great boss. Well, your penance, fool, is I'm eating your sandwich. I thought that that was your sandwich. Shut up and eat my sandwich. You know what, it's not gonna matter anyways because you're always gonna take mine because mine looks better. I want something Italian and greasy. Mm. But hey, what'd you get? Mm. You know, today I just decided to do a roast beef au jus. Bless you. Thank you. In the past with the engines that got painted, uh, Hemi Orange for example, I would always use like an off the shelf rattle can. And I noticed that that tends to deteriorate and fade quickly. So now I'm doing a single stage urethane by PPG. Where you have a situation like this with a motor where there's a lot of bare metal on it, you don't want to spray the urethane directly over the bare metal. It's not designed to do that. So I spray out the DP90, which is a two-part epoxy by PPG. Once the DP90 is applied and flashed off, it's ready for the top coat. Once I mix up the color, I put it in the gun, and it's time to start spraying factory Hemi Orange. What I like about it is when it's done, it's glossy, it'll stay glossy for years to come, and it's the correct color. And that nets me a great looking factory street Hemi Orange. Now we just have to put the inspection line markings on and it's ready to be installed. Honk! Went the big 440. I'm a slug in.
So today we've got all the rear suspension pieces that Josh took apart the other day, now detailed, organized, cleaned, and ready for reassembly. So we're gonna start working on that. The rest of the pieces that go on the motor so it can go down onto the K-member and suspension are also cleaned and detailed. So by the end of the day, we should have the motor, transmission, bell housing on the front suspension, and the rear suspension set on the cradle, and all of it ready to assemble and go up underneath our 71 CUDA. Jeez. Anyway, okay. I can't lose it. Keep okay. that locked down. I was thinking things were going along pretty well. We were making a lot of ground up. All of a sudden, I realized I had just been Cousin Dougie. Cousin Dougie would mean he did something wrong that cost me time or money. And in this case, he lost the brand new Napa axle seals I had laid out so I could put the rear end together. You can't put the axles in without the seals being in first. Thank you, Cousin Dougie. That's about all we can do on that until we have those seals. They got to go in first. Yeah. So I say, why don't we start putting the motor mounts on the 340, get the suspension cross member over here, and let's start building that out. I finally found a good use for the Corvette. We're gonna hang the we're gonna hang the nuts for the Mopar off of the Corvette and paint them. So we finally found a good use for the Corvette. Those idiots are going to be over there for the next two hours looking for the same bolt sitting right in the top of the toolbox. Meanwhile, I'll have to figure out what to do with the engine that's not suspended. There went the breaker. There it's back on. Sorry. Either guts. No, no. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry, Royal. I'm trying to get stuff done. Yeah, that's what I always get the impression of. Okay. Not big well. Behind you, buddy. Step back. But I don't think that's going to work. Well, so you had geometrically go got it. Well, yeah. Okay, I, okay, okay. I, Why don't you try I did not. nice I did to not. Him. I thought when we you pulled this arm out this far that we were okay. The motor is too far back on the cherry picker to be able to lower it down onto the K-member, so we need to suspend the motor a different way. We can hook it up to that crane. We almost need to. Almost going to have to. Here we've got the legs on the cherry picker that are too long. And so when we try to get in and hover straight over the center of the K-member, we can't get in that far. What are we gonna do? I gave the guys permission to move it over to the shop crane, raise it up in the air, put it wherever you want, drop it down on that K-member. And in the case of this, I don't have to worry about the Three Stooges forgetting to put a bolt in the cherry picker leg and having the whole thing come tumbling over like it did a few months back. All right, one for this. Yes, it is, very nice. Thank you, Darren, for being a dumb bastard. What happened, Mark? Well, I asked him to set the third member support up, but I guess no, that you was did too much not. I most certainly did. You most certainly did not. Thanks to Shop Crane, we were able to get this engine up in the air because we tried doing it with the engine hoist, which is sitting over there, but the legs were coming into it and hitting it, and we couldn't get it all hooked up right here to the K member. So we put it up here on the crane, it's going to work great. Yep. Okay, huh? looking good? That's it. Yep. The afternoon is going really good. We flipped a coin. The loser had to work with Mark. I won. I got to work with Royal, so things are going actually good. So Josh got stuck with Mark. Do you remember which ones are which? Yeah. I hope so, man. I always do. Because I don't. These are really easy, Josh. You won't remember this. I don't know why I take my time, but that hole, these things look identical. That yeah. hole has to face forward. It'll only go on one side and still face forward. Right. So if you put this on the other side and that hole's facing backwards, that's the emergency brake cable. So therefore it won't work. Right, so right. remember that. There are still a few items that I don't trust anybody else to do. Uh, when it comes to actually bolting the engine together, unless I have my engine builder do it, I wanna do it. When it comes to putting a transmission together, I wanna do it. Rear axle, same thing. You've gotta know how to set the preload on it. You gotta make sure that the seals are greased. If you want this thing to not fail, I should be the guy to put it together. Okay, I am ready to put the rear axle in. I need my flange, my blanc gagne. <laughs> Call it goober juice. Drive shaft is a propeller shaft. That's what Chrysler calls it. It connects the transmission output shaft to the rear axle. When it's connected and spinning, that's what makes your wheels go around on the outside. When things get hot, they stretch, mm -hmm. okay? So you're going down the road, everything gets a little bit of play to it. 
it gets, it gets a little bit longer, a little bit wider. You want a certain amount, that means also when it gets cool that it sucks up the other direction, okay? So if this axle did not have a little bit of slack in it, like if I couldn't go chum, 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 when I'm done, or you go out on the road test for any period of time and there's no in play in it, that rear end will seize up because everything will shrink, start getting close together like that, and then bam, you'll blow a bearing out. Wow. God, dude, I'm gonna lose it. What's wrong? This fly will not leave me alone. You tried wiping? <laughs> I hate you. So the fly, he's getting dizzy, man. <laughs> tired of flying around. Yeah. Okay, he was helping me. I was, he was a lot of help with uh, finding the extra bowl I needed in the nut, getting the wrenches, getting together, and uh, helping me with the motor mounts. Let's get that put down then. Let's do this. Wow, that thing. Oh, yeah. Stop. Oh, yeah, that's okay. good. Okay, let me. Pretty good on my I'm side. I'm going to guide this side really well. I need to pick up on this. You ready? Hang on. Hang yeah, on one uh, second. Uh, okay, go ahead, Roy. There you go, buddy. There you go. You're almost down. Yep. Looking good. Yeah. Oop. Hang on. Okay. There we go. I'm in. The bull's right behind you, right there. The shop crane is without a doubt one of the best pieces of equipment I've gotten. It's allowed me to be able to do everything safely, number one. Number two is, in the case where Royal or Josh or Darren don't show up, I can do it by myself. This thing's like moving butter around in a circle. I need one more two by four, I think. Okay, Royal. Don't go Tourette's on us. I, don't go, I, don't go I, yeah, Austin. Yeah, I think I need one more two by four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah one more two by four. You guys doing okay? Mark's having me put together the rear brakes. He knows that I've done a lot of them. I had my ASC certifications for about 10 years in uh, brakes, suspension, and steering. So that's kind of what I tried to specialize in. There's so many components to the rear brakes, the springs, the um, emergency brake cables. If you put something in backwards, it won't work. Or if you don't get it on there right, it could fall apart while you're driving. And that could be messy. OK, a lot of people don't know there's a primary shoe and a secondary shoe. The primary shoe always goes in the front. The primary shoe is smaller. Emergency brake actuator goes on the secondary shoe. Your drum brakes are self-actuating. As you apply them, they will, they will self-actuate. If they're put on wrong, they won't work correctly. One will grab more than the other. One side will grab more than the other, lock up. So you always want to be sure the primary shoe is in the front and the secondary shoe faces the back. So I just got done lubricating the power steering pump O-ring and I'm getting ready to uh, put the power steering pump back in the power steering pump housing. Uh, it's the original 71 CUDA power steering pump housing. This thing's actually turning out really, really pretty. There's a few pieces you have to put on, such as the crank pulley, uh, power steering pump, alternator, et cetera. And that dresses the motor out the rest of the way. <laughs> Did you bring the lock there? Check your depends, fool. I'm excited. It's going real well. This car, without a doubt, will be the most stunning car at any car show I've ever to. So we are done with the final assembly of the motor, transmission, bell housing, and shifter assembly, as well as the rear axle and leaf springs. So now we just have to push it inside the assembly room, put the final inspection line markings on, and it's ready to be installed in the car. I know that the transmission gets two white marks down at the very back of it, right down there. One of the things that I think sometimes gets overlooked when you're doing an OEM restoration is the duplication of the assembly line markings. An assembly line had employees, it had humans that were working on it as well as all the automated equipment. For the guy at the beginning of the assembly line to let the guy at the end of the assembly line know that all the bolts for the shackles had been tightened down, he would put a swatch of paint on there. For him to let him know that the brakes had been checked and tested and adjusted, there was another color of paint on there. So I try to mimic that exact same look on my cars today. So when I'm bragging about something being OEM, 
it's as close to OEM as you can get. And do you know why they do orange? Orange means it's a sure grip. They got rid of it in 71, they stopped using the tag that said sure grip on it, and they just put an orange paint around the filler. Today, we get to raise the car up in the air, lower it down around its original drivetrain for the first time in years, and make this car whole again. This is going to be an awesome day. Royal, come on. All right. Okay, motor and transmission go that end in this exact direction. All right. Do the man. Inch it. Hard to your right, Joshua. This is the very first time we've used the shop crane to assemble the cars like the manufacturer did. So it's very important that everything is safe, that all of the bolts that are installed are not flexing, that we have a good bite on it. The way I have the shop now set up looks a little bit different than the factory, but it's the exact same process. With the shop crane, I can lower the car down around the front suspension, rear suspension, put it all together just as the factory did, roll it straight forward to the bin pack side by side hoist, raise it up in the air, tighten up all the loose ends, lower it back down, roll it inside the assembly room, and all of a sudden we're ready to put interior glass and moldings on. It's going quite well considering we had to look for a few parts. I'm excited, it's going real well. It's funny because when I was a kid, I did quite a few motors in my different cars. And the way to do it was to raise the car up in the air on jack stands or logs, whatever you had take the hood off and take the motor and dive it in from the top. It was a lot of work. You usually beat the hell out of your firewall and all the aprons around it. I kind of wish I knew then what I knew now and I probably would have tried to duplicate the factory even back then. Basically everything went pretty well. There's a few modifications I need to make to the engine cradle so that we can make it more adjustable. I think it'd make lowering the car down and lining everything up a little bit easier if that was adjustable. But basically we're done with that now. So we're gonna put the wheels and tires on the car, roll it forward to the hoist, lift it up in the air, and button up the undercarriage on it. Our 71 Coupe is supposed to have the 15.7 Rally with the Goodyear Polyglass GT60 tires on it. The tires aren't here yet, so I'm gonna use the wheels and tires from the Daytona Charger, put them on there just so I can roll the car around and get it back into the assembly room. Now we got big boys, we got big boys, we got Jack big boys. Jack goes under. Woo, woo, woo. Royal steering, that's all I can say is royal steering. All right. Our town. Is that a good thing on the flywheel? God almighty. If you don't raise it up, I'm gonna slug in. Oh. Why didn't you ask if it was a good thing? <laughs> Did you poop a little? You, you better check your depends, fool. You just dumped them. Oh man, why'd you put a piece that of, awesome. that's like a splitting mall, you breed it. <laughs> You're just stupid. Give me that piece of wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How's that, friend? Good. Royal, did you leave the transmission in neutral? Marcus? I got it. Just check it. Got it all handled, guys. Or you're playing house, I got her handled. Cool. See if you didn't have those clips in there, that thing would fly out. Why would you say I'm a Why would I lie? The guys start drilling me on making sure that I got the drive shaft installed right. I don't know who they're talking to. This has happened to me before. I've been, this isn't my first time to the fair, okay? So I told them about the time me and little Tammy C was coming back from our coal in my charger and the U-joints came, came apart at a buck 20. We're driving back. 
I said, that's the kind of church we ought to get married in. I like that little church. She says, what makes you think we're getting married? Well, because a few weeks ago, you said you wanted to get married. Yeah, well, we're a little young, aren't we? <laughs> okay. Perhaps you haven't met the gas pedal yet. <laughs> Boom! I hit the gas pedal. I holds it to the floor. What's your point in your story? Clonk! Went the big 440. <laughs> Clap off! Went the 440. Kaboom! 120 miles an hour, the yoke let go of the back end. <laughs> After the drive shaft comes out, it takes about a mile and a half to coast to a stop. I look over and say, hey, now listen, don't start. Bam, the door's shut. She's out and walking home. Good. Okay, Josh. Huh. Um, seven, seven, eight, I believe that is the right-hand side, and seven, seven, nine is the left-hand side. Which they side should be labeled, too. Like, it should say R. Yeah, 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 see? Seven seven eight or okay, so here's the seven seven nine one. All right. I think one one side goes one way and one side goes another. Okay. Here's... We're doing these cars perfect. We are doing them exactly the way the factory did, only 40 years later. Everything is built out for the 71 Cuda. It's ready for its final assembly. People say they're out there doing it right. People are bragging that they're the man. Are they? Because I got a quadruple black 71 344 speed Cuda sitting right there that says we are. You've got quadruple black. That means you got a black leather interior, you got a black car, you got a black billboard and a black vinyl top. It's a 340 with a shaker hood on it, rear window louvers, rear spoiler. What else can you add to it? This car, without a doubt, will be the most stunning car at any car show it goes to. Probably one of the most stunning cars in the world. The back of your head looks like a f***ing lollipop. It really does. It comes out and it swirls out like that, like a lollipop. So you want to suck my head? And honestly, I'm in a bit of astonishment because we had, I would have to say, the single most productive week we've ever had. So with the new walking pad, Josh did a beautiful job creating the graphics for the fire door. Yeah, that cook some door looks great with the 71 Cuda image on there with a license That's plate that says kid. not dead yet. That's pretty clever. That's pretty clever. What? And putting the license plate on there. Oh yeah, it, was, it looks really good. Oh, it was your idea? No, it was his idea. Oh. I'm just trying to talk. I'm just trying to interject. All right, I don't know sometimes. All right. We got to use the brand new shop crane for the first time and duplicate the assembly line process. It was awesome lowering down the 71 Cuda over the suspension. I, I imagine that must have been exactly what it was like back in the day. What oh, were you, like 20 years old in 69? 14. Yeah, whatever. Well, 13. You're 14. old. It was kind of fun hanging out with Cousin Dougie. Haven't done that for a mm -hmm. long time. You, you throw in another little old ham. I got old ham on one half, warm and on the other. One's Native American and the other one's German. Hell of a combination. I think Rambo was that. Was he? <laughs> anyway, Dougie got to come out, uh, gave us a hand. Noticed that everything went pretty smooth when he was here. He's a little bit zombie-ish, but he's an awesome dude. And I love him. Word. The new bin pack hoist showed up. Another step towards making Graveyard Cars the best restoration shop in the country. We got the entire drivetrain assembly for the 71 Phantasm Homage Cuda built, detailed, assembled, and installed. And I survived another week with you, so I'm excited about that. By the way, that whole thing last week about the Rain Man, I was just gonna let you know, I guess I had gotten some more uh, responses. Feedback? Yeah, one's a doctor and says it's true. Three quarters, two pennies, a dime, and a nickel.